I'm Thaddeus Strasberger. I'm the stage director and set designer for Nabucco. This is my second production I'm doing at the Washington National Opera. I came two seasons ago to do the Hamlet. They invited me back to do the Nabucco, sort of on the coattails of, of the previous production. While he was here during Hamlet, I was also wondering, you know, what else do you want to do? What operas are you interested in? Nabucco is something that I really wanted to do, and uh, they were about to do it, and so it was uh, a nice match. The story of Nabucco is based on the story of King Nebuchadnezzar in ancient Babylon. The basis of the story is found in the Bible. The opera is set up a bit like a prologue, that there's something that takes place six months before, and then you get into the action at hand. The very first scene starts out very dramatically with Jerusalem being besieged by the Babylonian troops and Nabucco is conquering the city, which is an historical event that actually occurred. Giuseppe Verdi wrote Nabucco not only to tell the biblical story of King Nebuchadnezzar and his daughters Abigail and Phenena and the story of Zechariah and the plight of the Hebrews, but he was also writing about his own political times and what was happening in the world that he was living in. He grew up with Austrian occupation and Austrian rule. Many times with his operas, he ran into issues with the Austin censorship and he had to change his operas or had to change the story because the Austin said, nope, you can't do that. The only way they were able to get it around the censors, that obviously they couldn't do an opera about uh, the Austrians occupying Italy, that that would have been too clear, but they were able just to sort of twist everything into a historical context. And also being biblical, it gave a certain sheen of respectability. So from the very first bars of the music in the first act, people understood that it was a kind of protest opera against this foreign occupation and oppression. His name stood for the movement of the Risorgimento because V-E-R-D-I stood for Vittorio Emanuele, Re d'Italia. So the slogan Verdi was not just enthusiasm for Verdi, it also was a slogan for the liberation of Italy. There's one piece in the opera in the third act, the Va Pensiero Chorus, um, which is probably the most famous piece that's extracted from the opera. It's a chorus of, of the Hebrew people who are in exile. They're in Babylon and then they're along the banks of the river and they're imagining what it would be like to be along the banks of their own river and back at home. And they are remembering a time when their people were not oppressed and that there will hopefully be a brighter future coming up. The chorus Va Pensiero is certainly like the Mona Lisa of Verdi. It's the most famous melody that he wrote and the Italian people identified themselves immediately even from the first night of Nabucco, 9th of March, 1842, like they are like captive in their own homeland. It wasn't just an opera, it wasn't just a play, it wasn't just art, it was something that was vitally important to the culture and the well-being and the future of the country that he lived and, and, and loved so much. I think that the richness of the story isn't only what's on the printed page, but it is also sort of understanding that context. So the production that I've created together with this team is meant to pull together the spirit of what Verdi wrote to Nabucco and to try to get that on stage and be part of a larger conversation. <laughs> 